Okay, welcome to Valence Developer Diaries number 39. Um, <clears throat> today we're gonna cover a new feature that was added for like cell on your grid, cell driven events. And this was added on the build of 627. So this is what we're gonna kind of cover. And so we did, <clears throat> We created an app just to probably everyone already knows this, but since we put it on YouTube, new customers might not. But so grids have already actions for clicks either on the row itself or you have your row menu where you can have multiple options on that row menu. And then you have the icon columns, right? And then that column could do something. So if I click my row, it's doing this behavior. Um, I click the map, it's doing the map, just these are the existing ones prior to what we've just added, which we're going to go over. So let's go into app builder. So now what we want to do, as I should say, is we're going to, I want when they click the name cell of a row in a grid to show just like if I'm clicking this, the form itself, if they click the country. I want to show the map, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is go into this customer app. And I'm going to remove this row click, which was just showing the form. Okay, I'll just start there. So if we look at the grid itself and the app link to app variables, you'll see a new area called cell click fire event. So here are the current columns that are available. And then you set an app variable, which would be the value of the event you want to fire when they click that cell. So we're going to be doing it on name and country. So let's just create those app variables. So uh, customer. Event. And we'll just uh, country. Event. And then same but okay. So we'll link those two app variables. But the other thing too is, and Sean, you can jump into if you think I'm not stating it correct, like 100 correctly. But when this is when you're going to do this cell click, you want to also map. You, you probably will want to map values from that row to uh, existing to an app variable like the name or the country. So then your event has access to that value and can do something. So in our case, we're going to want to get the customer number and then also the country value. So I'll just... yeah, maybe when you when you show it in behaviors, because when you're when you're listening for an event. Um, you don't have the luxury of having access to the record. Like when you do a, an item click, a row click, and you do your filter widgets, you know, you you always have, you have access to the record that was clicked. But when you're firing an event and we listen for an event, you know, the, an event can be fired from the back end. An event could be fired from, from the button click or from anywhere. So you don't have access to the record that was clicked. So what Johnny was saying was, prep it, prep that event, you know, store off the values you want. Um, and in our case, we want, you know, maybe the, the customer number or the name of the country. And then your event will just use the app variables rather than relying on the existence of a record. Right. And that's why when this was introduced, this also was introduced, row, row click set. Now you can use this and it ha doesn't have to be used in tangent, but anytime a, a row in the in your grid is clicked you can automatically say hey i want this value from you know country to go into this app variable so customer country and i know that we're going to want a uh, number so customer number so when they click that row these will automate the values of that rows 
will go into your app variable. So country will get customer country will get the value of country and number will get the value of the customer. And then sell click. Okay, so now when they click that sell, I want you to fire an event. And for country, we're gonna say it's the customer country event. And for name, we're gonna say it's the customer name event. And so all it's gonna do is just take whatever the value is of those app variables and then fire that event. And we said country clicked, name clicked. <clears throat> so in behaviors, we have our event listeners. We don't have any right now. And so let's just add those two. So let's drive from that variable, country, what? And we want name click. Okay. Maybe that screen's worth an explanation too. When 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 you brought up the uh, the ad listener, um, local listeners would be pre populated already if we were firing the event via behaviors um because we know we know that it's you know uh, we know the events being fired because you're you're telling us through behaviors in this case we have no idea an app variable is a runtime value right in our case sure we have it set to an initial value but as you know you can change app variables via runtime so we have no idea what to list here for your local app variables to pre-populate it and that's why in the back in that what Johnny was clicking there is saying, is it fired from the back end or derived from an app variable? Well, then type in the name of it. Right. Okay. So we want to do something when country is clicked. So we want to show that map just like the icon column was or that row menu was. So we're just going to simply do a filter widget, the map. In our case, we want to have the country. And then we're going to use that app variable customer country because it should be set when they click. So let's save. Oh, I should say we'll do this. So title real quick. And then for the name, same thing. We want to filter a widget, but we're going to filter that form. And we want to say customer number to the customer number value of our app variable because that cell was clicked. Okay. I'm just going to save and stay in here just in case. So this is the app. I'm just going to do a shortcut to refresh it. Reload frame. Now you see a little difference. You see that the values of those two columns are underlined and also you'll see that the, you know, when I hover over it, it's a pointer to kind of give an idea that this is clickable. So when I click this, it's bringing up that edit form. When I click this, it's bringing up the map. So it's just a different way to do a, different type of behavior on your grid. So just another option, right? You see, you have the row, you have the cell, and you have the row menus, and then you have the action columns. Now, obviously, you would never do this in the real world where you'd have, have the same multiple ways to do the no. same thing. And, but it just was for demonstration purposes of, you know, Correct. you see every way to, you know, three ways to accomplish the same thing. Um, someone had a question, do you need to disable the row click to use this, um, you know, it would probably make sense. I mean, they, um, but Johnny, do you know off the top of your head what would take priority? I assume the cell click would take priority if you click on one that is I, cell. I'd have to, I'd have to experiment with that. I mean, I in normally you just wouldn't have a row click. Yeah, exactly. They might both fire off. So your, your row clicks firing off and that cells firing off. But which you, yeah. Which which maybe you want for some. I don't reason. know. Yeah, I'd have to experiment with that. 
but yeah, normally I'd say it's one or the other. Right. All right. Anybody have any questions? No questions. Okay. All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining. This will be, uh, well, this is being recorded. I'm going to be, we'll put it on our YouTube channel for others to uh, view it in a later time. And we will see you next time. Thanks, everybody.